broken, broken without you. But you love me, you love me for all I am, and you make me, make me whole again. We're in the third week of our current message series, all about grace, but only the second week of Advent. All of us can agree that the season of Advent is a very special season. Really, it's a season of grace. In fact, I'm making the argument in this series that in this season before Christmas, there are particular graces, special graces available to us, not available at other times. And so we're going to spend some time talking about grace and specifically the grace that's available to us right now. Grace is a gift. It's a gift from God. We experience grace when God acts in our lives and accomplishes what we could never accomplish all alone and on our own or only through our own power and ability. Over these Advent weeks, we're going to look at grace and our relationship to it. So, Two weeks ago, to kick off this series, we looked at the importance of recognizing, using an image from Scripture, that we're like sheep. We're like sheep in need of a shepherd. We need God to guide us and lead us, and when we allow Him to do that, God's grace can meet us wherever we are to provide whatever we need. We also mentioned that ultimately we receive God's grace to extend God's grace. Last week, we looked at the gift of peace. God's grace and peace go together. God's peace comes from knowing we're in right relationship with Him because of His initiative, not ours. This week, we're, go we're looking at the grace and gift of God's comfort, God's comfort. Christmas season, of course, celebrates comfort. We sing of tidings of comfort and of joy. But really, it's something we seek all the time, anytime. The dictionary definition of comfort is a state of physical ease or freedom from pain. The idea of comfort for you might be comfort food or favorite beverage. Maybe comfort for you means comfortable clothes or comfortable shoes. Comfort for you may be similar to some of the images of peace that we discussed last week, like relaxing at home in front of a fire with nothing to do and nowhere to go. What could be more comfortable than that? Maybe comfort simply means security, safety, warmth. And it, beyond the physical comforts, we might be looking for spiritual comforts too. Comfort from the burden of grief or distress, worry or anxiety. While for many people, the Christmas season is a joyous season of celebration, for many others, it is not. It is a burden. It is a season that can become very challenging. For you, maybe this season is challenging because it's the first one without a loved one who passed away this past year. Or maybe you're still mourning the loss of a loved one from years ago. You lost someone very special, and you feel that loss keenly, even bitterly, at Christmas time, more than any other time. Some people don't have fond memories of Christmas growing up. They lived in a dysfunctional household, and the dysfunction always kicked into high gear at the holidays. Perhaps this, this Christmas is going to be tough because you've gone through a divorce, or your parents are divorced, and it creates complications for everybody. Or you lost your job, finances are tight, and Christmas is an unwelcome expense. Maybe there are health concerns or considerations looming over the season for you. Whatever your story, whatever your struggles, God wants to give you 
the grace of comfort this season. We get a clearer picture of God's comfort and how we can allow it into our lives by looking at a passage from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah lived in the year 700 B.C. at a time when the people of Judah were very deliberately turning away from God. In fact, the first 39 chapters of Isaiah's book catalog just how the nation suffered from bad king after bad king, their corruption corrupting the whole nation. Isaiah rightly predicted that the nation would eventually be defeated by the Babylonian Empire and its citizens sent into exile, which is exactly what happened, as we saw two weeks ago when we discussed another prophet, the prophet Ezekiel, who lived during the period of the exile. Isaiah predicted the whole catastrophe, but it turns out Isaiah's news wasn't all bad. At the beginning of the 40th chapter, he writes this, Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. The word comfort is repeated twice for emphasis. When you say something multiple times, you usually say it with some emotional intensity and excitement. You repeat something because you want people to hear it. You want people to get it. So despite the difficulties and challenges the nation would most definitely face, despite the bitter consequences of the sins of the people and the sins of the kings that would come, Isaiah's message to Israel is that God had not given up on them yet. He turns to them with tenderness, with love and compassion, speaking to their hearts. If this is a tough time of year for you, or you're going through difficulties because of past failures or bad choices or the bad choices of others, or you just find yourself in unfortunate circumstances, God says, I know you're hurt. I see your pain, and I want to speak tenderly to you. God goes easier on us than we do on ourselves. Sometimes we can really beat ourselves up and put ourselves down for our faults and failures. Or we find ourselves nourishing a wound from the past and at the same time feeling foolish for not being able to get over it. That is not how God responds to us. God speaks tenderly to our wounds. He handles them with care. When you hear a voice that is not speaking tenderly to your wounds, that is not the voice of God. Of course, like anybody else in your life, God speaks with different voices and adapts different tones of voice, just as your close friends and family members have different ways of speaking to you depending upon the message they're delivering. So does God. God does speak with a voice of challenge to our stubbornness and our selfishness. At times he might sound like a stern coach or tough teacher you had growing up. But to your hurts and heartaches, he speaks only tenderness. Then Isaiah offers three reasons why the people of Judah could have comfort. They applied to the Judeans and they apply to us. He wrote, proclaim to her that her service is at an end. What does that mean? God is communicating to the people that despite the fact of their eventual exile, it will come to an end. God says that whatever uncomfortable or challenging situation you go through, it will come to an end. It is a moment, but only a moment. If you're in a challenging time right now, remember that it is only for a time, but it is a time that serves a purpose. In all our challenges, God means to use them for a greater purpose. God never wastes a hurt or heartache. Maybe you're suffering from poor choices or mistakes of your own making, and God allows it to draw you back to Him. 
Maybe the purpose of your pain is a valuable lesson that you can only learn through that pain. Maybe the purpose of your pain is that you will one day be able to help others struggling with the same issue. God says, take comfort, because at some point the pain will come to an end, and it will have had a purpose. The second reason to take comfort, Isaiah writes, Israel's guilt is expiated. Our faith tells us God himself has taken care of our sins. We take comfort because by Jesus' wounds, we're healed. Through his sacrifice on the cross, our sins have been removed. That's why there's no reason to condemn ourselves for our faults and failures. Yes, we can acknowledge them, we can confess them, we can mourn them, but precisely when we acknowledge, confess, and mourn our sins, we're giving them over to God, and He can comfort us. The third reason to take comfort, Isaiah writes, Israel has received double for all her sins. The word double in Hebrew means to fold over. We would say it's two sides of the same coin. On one side of the coin, the people have experienced pain, but on the other side of the coin, there's blessing and grace that could only have come through the suffering. And grace isn't in proportion to the pain. God's comfort comes to us in trial, it comes to us after loss, it comes to us after seasons of suffering, but His grace comes to us in a double amount of what we've endured. The comfort we receive will be a double portion of the tri trial we have endured, and the grace isn't in proportion to the pain, it's in excess of it. God is a God who comforts. The question remains, how do we cooperate with His grace to receive His comfort? And actually, Isaiah answers that in the next verse. A voice proclaims in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight a wasteland, a way, in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain or hill made low. In other words, it's simple. Remove the obstacles to His grace. Every valley could be sin in our life. Every mountain could be selfishness. Imagine the progress in the way of grace you could experience without those mountains and valleys in the way. A highway for our God is a reference to prayer, and the wasteland is a lack of it. Imagine, imagine the progress in the way of grace you could experience if you filled the wasteland with prayer. So, for your to-do list this week, as part of your quiet time each day, why not go back and read the first five verses of chapter 40 in Isaiah, which are exactly the verses we've looked at this morning. Allow the Lord to speak comfort to you. Then, as a second step, be the voice of comfort for someone else this week. We receive God's comfort so that we can be God's comfort for others. We receive God's comfort so we can be God's comfort for others. Maybe. Someone comes to mind, someone you know who desperately needs a kind word of encouragement this Christmas, or is facing their first Christmas with an empty place at the table, or is alone this Christmas. This week, send them a text, make a call, reach out with a tin of Christmas cookies just to let someone else know you're thinking of them. Speak tenderly to them because as we share the comfort we have received, we receive more of God's comfort in return. Take comfort, extend comfort, because God's grace always has the last word. You know, we can't demand grace, we don't deserve grace, we'll never ever earn it, but we can position ourselves to recognize it and to receive it. That's what Advent is all about, 
positioning ourselves to recognize and receive the grace and favor of the Lord. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. You can be part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples simply by sharing this video. We're grateful you're part of this community.